So welcome to this way too early morning in Risco in Denmark and to this probably new series I want to call it crushing the composition it's something I've thought about for a long time I don't know how exactly it's going to be but in this video I will simply just take you through my compositional thoughts in a scene right here in the forest that I just stumbled upon and I think there's something to work with so whether or not the pictures will turn out I'm not sure but uh, let's get to it so as you can see the scene here in front of me is full of wild garlic here it's may it's springtime and then i have this old fallen over trunk here and what initially made me pause was actually as you can see here to this side here the forest is kind of dark and it's kind of dark to this side here also and then if we look up you can see there's some light coming down through this hole up here and lighting up the background so what i am thinking is that this trunk here can work as some kind of leading line leading element leading into the scene and then into the light here in the background where the eye will come in and then the trunk is just surrounded by wild garlic so my lens of choice is the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter G lens. This is an ultra wide angle zoom and I'm all the way out at 12 millimeter on a full frame camera. So this is very, very wide. This is simply just to create a very, very strong and almost like distorted depth in the scene. So it looks as if this trunk here in the foreground comes out into my face. The only thing I have to decide right now is whether or not to include the trunk over here in this way so I can actually see the end of it or if I should move the camera over but I will just start with this one and as you can see just also have to decide whether or not I'm looking up or if I'm looking down obviously I want to focus on this scene here with the trunk and all the wild garlic so I will point it a little bit down I will probably, let's see here, put it around here as to have this garlic here within the scene. Now, obviously you're watching this on a 16 by 9 format, but when I change it to 2 by 3, the black borders up here and down here, they disappear. So the scene is a little bit wider than what you can see here. So the next things I have to decide is the settings of the camera and usually I just prefer to shoot an aperture priority. I might as well. Uh, manual is also fine, same result. And simply because the depth of field is as strong as it is here, I've gone all the way to f16 and I'm just focusing about 70, 80 centimeters into the scene to get everything in focus. At f16, ISO 100, the camera gives me a 10 second shutter speed. So the only other thing I have to decide now is simply just when to shoot. And I should shoot whenever there's almost no wind, which is right now. So right now the camera is exposing, two second timer. And yeah, I guess this is it. When I have this shot here, I'll just go in and make sure that everything is sharp back to front and it really is so here is the straight out of camera raw photo what stands out the most to me is the distortion the distortion of a 12 millimeter lens is usually quite heavy and it becomes a abundantly clear when you photograph in forests. Here's my edited version of the photo and as you can see I went for a very fairy tale like look. Due to the adjustments of the distortion the crop is quite heavy. How much you want to edit your photos is of course up to yourself but if you are interested in knowing how I did this I'm including a tutorial on this edit in my upcoming Photoshop for landscape photographers tutorial bundle. So since I have the shot now in horizontal, I will also just to be sure, make one in vertical. The reason why I do both horizontal and vertical is simply so I have the same shot 
for different formats. So vertical generally works better for Instagram and obviously a magazine front pages. So in case I will need to use this for a magazine front cover, I also have a vertical version. Settings wise, it's completely the same. The only thing I've changed is how I've turned the camera. If you want to know more about composition in landscape photography, be sure to get my ebook on the subject. You can get the free light version of the ebook by signing up for my newsletter. So a great tip I can share with you when it comes to deciding your composition in field is to try a lot of different compositions. Now I cannot say whether or not I prefer this composition or some other composition. So I try to get all of them when I'm in the field. So in this case here, I will just turn the camera and try another composition, which is right here. Careful that I'm not destroying all the garlic. Because, as I said, I wasn't sure about the trunk part over here, whether or not I wanted to include that in the scene. So I'm just moving the camera a little bit closer and as you can see it makes a big difference let me just take off the camera you can see here so if I'm all the way out here because I'm shooting so wide makes a really big difference moving the camera just a few centimeters back and forward you can see moving it in here which is my intention then I make sure that I have the trunk on this side and the trunk on this side here working as leading lines into the scene while having the wild garlic right here in the middle so i would say that is definitely also a composition worth chasing so i can see i just need to take down the legs of the tripod a little bit it is very much mingling around when it comes to choosing the best composition the thing is when i'm shooting as wide as i am right now it really enlarges everything and the trunk here on the right becomes rather big so in the end i am not sure if i prefer the first composition but let's just see if this one here works so f16 and let's just focus. I'm just focusing here on the trunk. Since I'm shooting so wide at f16, everything is in focus from back to front, even if I'm focusing just like half a meter into the scene. And two second timer. And let's see if it is a desirable result. So I'm just checking here. Is it in focus? Yes, it is. Is it sharp? Most definitely from back to front. I also just need to check if the flowers have moved in the composition and they seem to be tech sharp. No wind has blown them around. So just as before, when I have the horizontal, I will also try out a vertical composition. Let's see here, I have to move it a little bit back. So what you can't see from over there, let me just put this one on here, is that I have to decide how much of the garlic down here I want to include. So I am moving the tripod just a little bit forward here. Careful, I do not want to harm the scene and I may think that I actually prefer this so I don't have that spot of white down here and be careful that I don't include the tripod leg and as I said it's a lot about mingling around not destroying the scene not destroying the flowers a little bit out and 
I think this is just about optimal. And of course, have to wait for the wind. The wind is moving the flowers right now. Just give it a little moment and I can get the shot. And just because I'm not completely satisfied just yet, just moving this here a little bit into the scene like this and I actually think this here might work a tad better. It's very hard to decide because on one hand I don't want the scene to tip to either side and I also want to have a good equal distribution of the flowers here in the foreground. So it really is down to like really a few 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 inches back and forward to get the optimal composition. So another thing I also decided to do, you can see down here, see all the leaves down here, they have quite a lot of dirt on them. So I actually just make sure just to clean them a little bit so I don't have to do that in Photoshop afterwards because I can easily do it in Photoshop, it just takes a lot of time. It's way easier to do it in field than doing it in Photoshop. But I would say I will give this composition a try too and then I think I'm good. If you want to learn even more about composition, be sure to check out my two ebooks. I designed them so they are very easy to read and they are just full of examples. The first one is 113 pages long, the next one is 149 pages, and there are so much information in them. You can get the free light versions via the links down in the description and you can also get the full version. So let me know what you thought of this format, if it is something you want to see even more of. It is not going to be a weekly event, that's for sure. The regular videos will still come out, but if you enjoyed it, let me know. And as always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment.